Okay, so here are the injection points to create a brow lift. If you do this on all your patients, you will get okay results on most of them, but you will sometimes get bad results, and you may lift eyebrows too much in some patients and drop them in others. The reason is every face is different. Despite the appealing idea that there's one universal pattern that will solve all your problems, the truth is there isn't. Every treatment needs to be designed around the nuanced differences between each patient, their age, muscle strength, sex, eyebrow shape, and the desired results. What we need to understand are the principles from which you can appropriately design a treatment for any face. These principles are like the Lego bricks of treatment design. Once you understand the properties of each Lego brick, you can use it to create bespoke designs for individual patients. So what are the principles we need to understand? First, the shape of the ideal female eyebrow, because it's usually females that we're lifting eyebrows on, and in many ways, eyebrow lifts in men are a bit limited because they feminize faces. So the eyebrow should fit in with the other facial features, and the female eyebrow has been well described by artists. The medial border should be linking the ala base, the inner canthus, and the head of the brow. The tail of the eyebrow should be on a line that runs from the ala base through the lateral canthus to the end of the tail of the eyebrow. And the arch of the eyebrow is typically on a line running from the ala base through the pupil to the arch. With respect to the eyebrow lift, knowing the position of the arch of the eyebrow is key to knowing which parts of the muscle need to be left with strength to lift the eyebrow. On that topic, before we dive into that, let's refresh which muscles actually affect eyebrow position. You can divide the face into eyebrow elevators and eyebrow depressors. The eyebrow is elevated by the frontalis muscle upwards and laterally. The eyebrow is pulled down and medial by the corrugator supercilii, and the procerus muscle and the depressor supercilii pull the medial head of the eyebrow down. The orbicularis oculi pulls the eyebrow inferior and medially, laterally, and inferior laterally, medially. Essentially, the most important thing for us to understand is the lateral component. Now that we understand the muscles and which directions they pull, it becomes more intuitive how relaxing muscles or affecting their resting tone can affect the balance of forces across the eyebrow and therefore its relative position. Fundamentally, there are two ways that botulinum toxin can affect the position of the eyebrow. First, it has been observed that if you relax half of a muscle, the other half actually increases its resting tone. This is very useful when treating the medial frontalis as it makes the lateral frontalis more active in some cases, which is typically where we want to lift the eyebrows. The second way that neuromodulators can alter the position of the eyebrow is by altering the vector across the eyebrows. Vectors are simply a force with a particular direction, and the eyebrow is held in a balanced position by the forces from all the muscles. You could think of the eyebrow as being in a tug of war. As injectors, we get to decide which side will win, the elevators or the depressors. As we've discussed, we have control over both how strong the elevators are and how weak the depressors are, giving us variations in the degree of lift possible. Let's consider the weakest possible lift. We could look simply at a muscle that is involved in restraining the eyebrow and pulling it down and relax it slightly. The most logical place to do this if we are lifting the lateral brow is by injecting the orbicularis oculi muscle just at the area where it pulls the eyebrow down. A four unit injection into the tail of the eyebrow will affect the orbicularis oculi muscle, superior and laterally, and create a little lift with minimal risk and side effects possible. You can see how we could further increase this lift simply by treating more of the orbicularis oculi muscle, which we can do as we go medially underneath the eyebrow. Typically, a one unit dose, always very superficially underneath the lateral third of the eyebrow, will enable more lift while still creating a natural looking result. If to lift the eyebrow even more, we can utilize the other effect of botulinum toxin to increase the resting tone of the lateral frontalis muscle. All we have to do is treat the medial frontalis muscle. I find this one of the most powerful ways to lift an eyebrow, precisely how I will cover shortly. As you may know, it's typically not advisable to treat the frontalis muscle without treating the glabella complex, because in most patients, although not all, the corrugator and the procerus are sufficiently able to depress the brows so that when you treat the elevator muscle, the frontalis, on its own, and the depressors are no longer opposed, a heavy frown may develop alongside a lateral brow lift, otherwise known as a Spock brow. 
Even without spocking, your patient may look angry when they are not if you do not treat the glabella in some cases. This also occurs if the medial frontalis is overtreated, even if the glabella complex is treated. It all stems from an overall loss of medial support to the brow. So how do you design a treatment using landmarks on individual faces so that you get bespoke results while using one set of core principles? If you go back to what we've learned about eyebrow shape, we can use this to decide exactly where we want the muscle to be active to lift the eyebrow. The most important line is between the ala base through the mid pupil, through the arch of the eyebrow to a point on the hairline. It's the frontalis muscle along this line, which I wish to be more active so that the arch of the eyebrow is lifted. Of course, I don't, however, want ladder lines running all the way up into the forehead, which is a side effect of under treatment of the frontalis. So I need to shape this area of untreated muscle so that it lifts without causing lines. This is why I draw a line up to the hairline so that I can see the direction of the vector I'm trying to increase. I then draw a line from the end point to the position of the tail of the eyebrow and then a second line from the hairline to a point equidistant to the tail of the brow. This triangular shape, often called cat ears by my trainees, is an area where you do not want botulinum toxin to reduce the strength of the lateral frontalis muscle. Of course, there are also other areas of the frontalis muscle that we do not want to treat. And before we start treatment planning, it's important to rule those areas out too. To prevent a medial brow ptosis, it's a good idea to leave a good portion of the frontalis muscle active in the lower third. Typically, I use a rule of two centimeters from the orbital ridge. And I'll draw a line here, beneath which is an area I consider to be a safety zone where I should avoid. Conveniently, many patients have very few lines in the lower third of their forehead. And so this area can be left untreated to provide support to the medial brow. The next set of markings is purely to enable you to become more efficient with your botulinum toxin. Mark out the areas where there is no frontalis muscle, but is part of the forehead, so that you know to target areas where there is active muscle and not waste your toxin, for example, on the aponeurosis. What you should be left with is a small area of the frontalis muscle medially, which is ready to be treated, while the areas required to support the medial brow and lift the lateral brow have been excluded from potential relaxation. So how do we decide where to inject the forehead? Most of the forehead is now conveniently excluded, so the bulk of the work is already done. We now need to space our injection points evenly to efficiently cover the area which we wish to relax. The first principle we need to understand is how far does botulinum toxin spread from one point of injection. With a dose of one to two units, I estimate about 1.5 centimeter circumference of effect on the muscle. In fact, you can consider this about the size of a marble. And our task is to fill the space we want to treat with marble sized treatment areas. To spread them evenly, I work by dividing the area up first in half and then in half again, placing my planned injection points at logical positions so that in the end, I fill the space efficiently and symmetrically. It's vitally important laterally that you are symmetrical, if the face is symmetrical. Small changes in the position of your lateral injection lead to large changes in the relative size of the untreated muscle, which means the relative size of lift. Asymmetrical eyebrows do not go unnoticed, so work hard to do this very neatly. Injection points of the labella and the orbicularis oculi in most cases fit the licensed positions very well and will contribute some of the overall lift to the eyebrows in a three area treatment. Overall, there are several grades of brow lift that we can create. A mild lift by injecting two to four units into the tail of the brow, a mild to moderate lift caused by injecting orbicularis oculi muscle more comprehensively, a moderate lift by treating the frontalis and the glabella together, and a maximum lift caused by treating the medial frontalis muscle, the orbicularis oculi muscle, and the glabella. Remember, one of the most important factors is the degree of muscle which is left untreated in the frontalis, so that you can adjust a lift that is too strong simply by adding a little more to the top of the little cat ears to soften a lift. I recommend one unit right into the tip of that little cat ear. You can also treat orbicularis oculi at the follow-up to get more of a lift if you have only done glabella and frontalis at the first treatment and are not satisfied. Remember this should be seen the first time you do this as a journey. Adjustments are normal as you get to understand each person's face. 
I have a fantastic bonus for you for watching this video, which is in the description, you'll find a link to some very useful botulinum toxin injection patterns. They include the licensed dose for different botulinum toxins, as well as some common patterns which emerge when you build treatment designs around individual faces. Remember the licensed patterns in this document are specifically for treating lines and not for creating an eyebrow lift. In fact, many of those licensed patterns will cause a loss of eyebrow lift and flattening of the brows. Hopefully the principles I've taught in this video will enable you to selectively use them when appropriate or alter those patterns so that you get the best result for patients wanting a brow lift.